All right. Hey guys, um, I'm here today with Adam Smith from Niche Website Builders. A lot of you guys have asked questions about age domains and we, they're kind of popping up on the internet lately. And so we figured today was a good day to sit down and talk about them and share just some, some beginner intro advice. And Adam, thanks so much for being here with us. No, you're welcome. Thanks very much for, for having me, Michael. Excited to do this project with you. Thank you so much. Um, can you give me just a quick elevator pitch of your background and how you got started in niche sites? Sure. So I've been involved in uh, investing in websites uh, for a number of years. And prior to that, I was working for uh, digital marketing agencies, doing this kind of thing for other people, uh, more or less. And I quit that to do to run my own portfolio. Um, and then about uh, two and a half, three years ago, I met my business partner, Mark. Um, and we were frustrated with the lack of professional help out there for other website investors. So we started an agency basically dedicated towards helping people build, monetize, grow, invest in their, their online assets, their websites. And it's called Niche Website Builders. And that's a big chunk of my focus today. Good. And that's been about two years now, you said? Uh, we're in the third year of trading now. So just about, about two and a half years. And how's growth been for you guys? Incredible. So we're now a team of around uh, 170 full-time employees. Wow. Um, we've done well over 100 age domain projects, which is, uh, which is awesome. I think in our small space of people we're in, I think we consider, you know, probably one of the, the thought leaders on age domains, how to use them, how to vet them. Um, yeah, how to make them work for you. Absolutely. Very cool. All right. So real quick, what would you say um, to someone who's not familiar with age domains? What exactly is an age domain? Sure. So you can think of an age domain as a website that's been around for some time in the past. Typically, it's been another business or it's been another another type of website. Um, and for a number of reasons, those reasons can be as simple as the old website owner forgot about the website and didn't renew the domain all the way through to we've seen. And you have to do a little bit of digging, but we've seen examples where websites have gone offline and they didn't expire them because the couple who ran them got divorced. Um, oh. all the way through to the owner, they have passed away when nobody's there to renew the domain name. So they, these domains expire for a number of reasons, but typically they've been online as a website for a number of years. And some of these uh, age domains that we see and we use have been around for 15, 20 years, some of them almost right back to the beginning of the internet. It, it's crazy. And during the time when they were online as part of, um, you know, as a, their, their previous life as another website, they built up, or some of them built up a lot of trust and authority and, and history with Google. And during the course of those maybe 10, 15, 20 years, they also acquired lots of backlinks. And depending on what type of business it was, some of those backlinks can be almost impossible to get. So, you know, we're talking about the BBC, for example, or uh, New York Times or Business Insider, um, links which either would be prohibitively expensive for you to go out and acquire, would be really, really difficult if you did digital PR to get or you just couldn't get in general anyway. Um, and then we can use those just because the, the website is offline and has, and has expired. Um, they go through a process where you can you can purchase them. And just because they um, the business went offline doesn't mean those links don't point there. And it doesn't mean all that history is lost with Google. And if we build on it and we maintain the same relevancy, we can rebuild a site and skip a big chunk of time, essentially. What you say with an age domain is time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and money, just the cost of links or trying to acquire those links would be, I recently yeah. reached out to some larger online publications that have high domain authorities that have sponsored posts. And I was thinking, oh, I could maybe get a sponsored post and then get a you know a link back to my site. I mean, they'll do it, but for a very high price, a price that's well, well over an age domain cost, you know, for one link. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So mo most age domains are anything from a thousand to a couple of thousand dollars. Um, and like you say, m one or two of these links would probably cost you the same, if not more. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the offer I got back from the from Denver Post, which has a DA of 90 or something, was five grand for a, a sponsored post. And I was like, OK, uh, thanks, but no thanks. You know, <laughs> I'll just find an age domain with one on anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, now, what would you say as far as if someone was listening to this and they think they're new to this and they think, okay, I'll get an age domain. I'll just go to say one of the marketplaces like GoDaddy and I see what looks like a great domain. Um, are, are there risks associated with that or is that kind of a sure thing as well? 
Yeah, so there, there, there's lots of routes to go and buy in Asia Domain. You've got the actual marketplaces like GoDaddy. You've got um, kind of resellers, which are like us. Essentially, we buy them from these auction places and then we resell them. And then you've got other marketplaces that we partner with, a company called Odis, ODYS, who do the same thing. They buy them from a number of sources, vet them and put them on their website. But essentially, there's a, there's a lot of nuances that go with an age domain, um, especially when you're trying to find if one is a good one or a bad one. Um, and it covers everything from, we could do a whole episode just on, on vetting a domain, but everything from trademark issues. You've got to remember these were previous websites or previous businesses. Did they have a trademark? Is it still live and relevant? If it is, it's a red flag. All the way through to the, over the course of that business's life, the website's lifetime, did they try and buy links? You know, did they do a bad job of acquiring links? Uh, did they mess that up? Um, did someone else buy the, the web the domain before you and turn it into a PBN or as part of some kind of blog network and spam it a little bit? Has it ever been hacked? Has it ever been used for promoting porn or Viagra or anything like that? Um, and interestingly, you see that more often than not with domains. So just to give you kind of a rough idea, uh, we use a tool called Spamzilla to like build the through our domains. Um, and every week there's about 8 million domains on there. Um, and then we have a short list roughly of about 3,000. And then we have a short, short list typically of around 20-ish. And then from there, we'll end up purchasing maybe five of those. So we take it all the way down from like 8 million down to maybe five that we'll end up bidding on. Um, so you have to be really diligent in that due diligence process. Yeah, I can see myself, if I didn't, know about that finding a domain and thinking oh i'll just grab this for yeah. 200 bucks on godaddy and then it could be in a world of hurt afterwards well one um, thing i'll say because a lot of people do that so uh, and this is not a plug for a service but if if you if you are looking at an age domain and you don't know if you've done your due diligence properly we have a service now it's on the website on our website you can go there and you can pay for one of our team to actually put it through our full vetting process record the video for you so you can see what we've looked at. And then you can even have a call as well then to talk through the results. So if you are on the fence and you've seen one, but you're still not sure before you spend that money, like maybe get someone else to have a look at it. Yeah, I saw that service recently on your website. And it's actually it's actually a very reasonable price considering what you're gambling when you buy an age domain. I thought it was I thought it was a good deal. Um, now I've seen age domains not only on your website, but also on ODYS um, that appear to be at one point related to a physical store, like a brick and mortar store in a town, right? Yeah. Now, if somebody was to buy an age domain that previously belonged to a physical presence, what kind of impact or any does that have on the growth or the expectations of the website for a content site? Sure. So there's a, there's a fine line there. So I'll give you the example. We covered one recently in our live stream. It was a, a brewery website. And it, yeah. It, yeah, and the, and there's two types of there's two types of, of website when it comes to that. One is a pure business website where it all it has is the homepage, maybe a contact us page, maybe a uh, you know a, a menu page or a you know our beers page, and that's it. Like it's a three or four page website. All it's there to do is to talk about the brewery as a business. Or the other type of site you've got, which this one was, was talked about the brewery. But then it also had a section on home brewing and it had uh, a ton of content about how to brew at home. And it also had like a section a, a of niche relevant blog role. Yeah, exactly. And it had another blog section called reviews where they reviewed other people's beer in there. And it had another section, which was all about beer related news. So that website is no longer just about the brewery as a business, but is about brewing beer in general. And that is this kind of site that you want to turn into a content site about beer brewing, uh, brewing beer, rather than just a website that had four or five pages and talked about the brewery as a business, essentially. Okay. Um, when you get an age domain and you, you pump content into it, what kind of expectations can you expect to see versus a new domain as far as the traction that each article will have and the sandbox effect, if, if you will? Yeah, sure. So, and they all behave differently. So there's not there's no one size fits all. Some will be really, really quick. Some will take a, a little bit longer. But in general, what you find is, and whether you believe in like the Google sandbox or not on a fresh domain, most fresh domains, you don't really tend to see a ton of progress for at least the first nine to 12 months. Like it's very, very slow. Um, with an age domain, you still get that, that 
um, slowness, but typically, and it can be any, typically it's shorter. And typically by shorter, I mean, it can any, be anything from like a month to the first six months is really slow. But then you start to hit that exponential growth phase, phase much quicker, typically by, you know, at sometimes six, seven, eight months quicker than you would on a fresh domain. Sure. It's not a silver bullet though. It's not like buy an age domain, put a ton of crappy content on there, or just put 10 articles on there and expect to make a ton of money. Like sure. you start to put the same effort and work in, just the time horizon is is shortened with an age domain. Plus you've got the added benefits of already having links. That brings up my next question. So obviously, so I'm doing an age domain case study with you guys that, that you mean me and you have talked about. And essentially um, I put a hundred thousand words of content on it. Now yeah. with this strategy, obviously I'll be doing more content because I'm not stopping at a hundred posts, but would I even need to consider links or should I just rely on the good foundational links I have and then build great content? Yeah. So initially, uh, I just content essentially is all it needs. You've already, you're making the whole you, the whole point of using an age of domain is that you make use of those initial links. They will get to a point though, similar to what we just kind of talked about previously or off, off the camera, where you get to a point where you add this content and then it, it starts to plateau the content has found this kind of a, a, rich, a, a natural place in the SERPs. And then you start running out of low competition keywords. And then you think, well, to move, keep moving the site forward, I now need to increase the authority so I can go after more competitive terms. Then you should probably look at link building and more content at the same time or switch it between some content, some link building, increase the authority, back to content, and, and so on. But initially, no, you, you don't need any links because that's what you're paying for with the age domain. Great. Well, look, I know everyone's kind of crunched for time this morning, so I won't hold you too late. But um, for, for those of you guys watching, still watching and are interested in this, um, just if you want to just from the shadows, just keep watching. Adam and Mark both do an excellent live stream series. Is it twice a week at this point? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we do Age Domain Tuesdays and we do the Niche uh, Website Investors show on Thursday. So Tuesday, every Tuesday is all about Age Domains, where we look at some in our inventory. We do a deep dive show you what our vetting process looks like, kind of our ideas and thoughts around maybe keyword research ideas for that type, type of website. And then on Thursday, then it's more about website investing in general. So to give you an example, we just did a three-part series on building versus buying and which one's best for who and the pros and cons and things like that. Great. Very cool. Um, I actually enjoy those live streams a lot. I, I try to catch them and learn from them because obviously I'm at a point right now where I'm trying to soak up a lot of info on age domains. Um, but nonetheless. Adam, I really appreciate your time today. I don't want to hold you past your, your deadline. Um, we will be talking soon again as we move into this case study with my age domain. I'm really excited to see how it goes and continue pumping content into it. And, and hopefully it's something that um, we can look back and say we did a good job with it. Awesome. Yeah, me too. Really excited. Yeah, I can't wait, man. Adam, thanks so much. And we will talk to you soon. Cheers, Mike.